it's D U E U tell I see you by this point you read my mind it's time for football we bout to keep this thing moving I'm about it you're with it let's do it we gon' make this thing official you heard me if you're the best then let's prove it the goal is set to have a team become a unit man we bout to keep this thing moving I'm about it you're with it let's do it we gon' make this thing official you heard me if you're the best then let's prove it the goal is set to have a team become a unit yeah Welcome to Football Game Plans NFL All 32 Show. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and today we're going to break down and preview the 2020 edition of the Buffalo Bills. So before we get started, let's take a look at some of the key storylines heading into the Bills season as we go into our four-minute offense. The Buffalo Bills made a major splash this offseason by acquiring the talents of wide receiver Stephon Diggs to help bolster their passing game. The 26-year-old former Minnesota Viking comes to Buffalo after posting back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons with the Vikings, and he figures to be the Bills' bona fide number one option on the perimeter. Diggs has all of the tools that you look for at the position, great route runner, strong run after the catch skills, and excellent hands. He's just entering his prime, and his arrival, to me, slides Cole Beasley and John Brown into more natural number two and number three roles, making them and that passing game much more dangerous in 2020. All of that potential optimism about the Bills passing game hinges on the growth that third year quarterback Josh Allen can make this upcoming season. Last year, we saw growth in his ability throwing the football from a consistency standpoint, improving his completion percentage by six points and his passer rating by 18 points. Deep ball accuracy is where a lot of the focus will be for Allen this upcoming year. In the intermediate game is where he tends to have the most success. So the goal for him this season is to flatline his play, which will help elevate the offense as a whole. Now, what I saw last year from him that was the most promising was how well he played in certain games when the team was down on the scoreboard and needed him to lock in and find consistency. He was able to do that in a couple of games late last season in which the Bills needed to win. Allen led the league last year with fourth quarter comebacks with four and game winning drives with five. And if the light comes on in the accuracy department, then the Bills will have something special at quarterback. Last year, we saw the Buffalo Bills finish 10 and six and make the playoffs and not much was expected of the Bills entering the 2019 season. And it quickly became obvious that this was a solid team and one that needs to be taken seriously each and every week. Now they relished in that scrappy underdog role throughout the season. Fast forward to 2020, and with the Patriots essentially turning over a good portion of their defense, along with the uncertain nature of the newly acquired Cam Newton, as well as the success against the Jets and Dolphins, both of which look to be improved this season, the question then becomes, how will the Bills handle being the hunted in 2020. This is a football team that returns 21 of 22 starters and made some strong moves in both free agency and the NFL draft. On paper, the Bills figured to be the top team in the division with the taste of the playoffs from this group along with the talent that they have returning on the roster. Will they be able to handle expectations is going to be one of the major storylines heading into the Bills season. One of the best ways to handle expectations is by having continuity. And what the Bills most definitely have is that coming into the season. The continuity along the coaching staff, offensive line, secondary, etc. The Bills return all 11 starters on offense and 10 on defense. In this COVID-19 world that we're all living in, that will be critical as teams don't have the luxury of working through mini camps, OTAs, and probably a truncated training camp in preseason. We'll see if that makes as big of a difference for the Buffalo Bills as we approach the season, but having the majority of your organization intact from last season is definitely not a bad thing. We spoke a few minutes ago about Josh Allen entering his third year as the Bills starting quarterback, and while he has made some strides, it's obvious that being a more consistent passer is the next mountain that he'll have to climb. However, there are many different ways for a quarterback to play the position, and yes, you'd like to see all quarterbacks have that arbitrary 60% completion percentage and be able to hit certain arbitrary numbers as passers, but playing quarterback at its core is about moving the team downfield and playing winning football, and I know many hate the term winner, but that's what Josh Allen has been for the Buffalo Bills. Now where he thrives better than most is inside the red zone. So his quarterbacking has been good for him and the Bills, but with that said, it definitely has room to get better. I like the solid depth they've built here with Matt Barkley and fifth round draft choice, Jake Fromm out of Georgia. Barkley has been solid when asked to step in for an injured Allen. 
and the battle between he and Fromm will determine if Fromm can be the long-term answer at QB2. In the backfield, second-year player Devin Singletary figures to take over the starting role, at least the full-time starting role, having started eight games last season. He was impressive as a rookie rushing for nearly 800 yards at 5.1 yards a carry. What's special about Singletary is his quickness and elusiveness, and the Bills hope that that'll be what helps him get into the end zone a little bit more than twice this upcoming season. He'll be joined by rookie Zach Moss out of Utah. Now, Moss brings good power and burst to the backfield and is a very strong receiver coming out of it. Buffalo envisions he and Singletary working in a tandem, sometimes in the same backfield at the same time this upcoming season. He gives them a younger version of what they had last year in Frank Gore. And TJ Yeldon will more than likely serve as a third running back who can provide good depth behind both Singletary and Moss. Bringing in Stephon Diggs from the Minnesota Vikings for a first round pick was a solid move for Buffalo. They figured that they wouldn't find a player where they picked in the draft that was better than the former Vikings star. He gives them a player that teams will have the game plan for, thus creating better opportunities in the matchup department for the rest of the receiving core. For instance, John Brown, who seems to have quickly developed a strong rapport with Josh Allen, figures to benefit. Brown had his best season since 2015, going over 1,000 yards and scoring six touchdowns. Now, with the addition of Diggs, he'll be more likely to draw coverage from a team's second or third corner, which should lead to better opportunities for him deeper down the field. Cole Beasley saw the most targets he'd seen since 2016 with the Dallas Cowboys last year with the Buffalo Bills, and he was targeted 106 times and proved to be, once again, a clutch performer on third downs. And with the top three options being pretty set, there will be a battle for spots four through six on the roster. Buffalo added some stellar rookies in Gabriel Davis out of UCF and Isaiah Hodgins out of Oregon State to compete with Duke Williams, Robert Foster, and Isaiah McKenzie. Both Davis and Hodgins are big body stretch receivers who are solid run after the catch guys. Now, there is a lot to be optimistic about with the tight end position in Buffalo. Dawson Knox finished third on the team as a rookie last year in receiving and hopes to make the tight end position a fixture in the passing game. He, as well as Tyler Croft, who dealt with some injuries last year, hope to add a new element to the offense this season from that position, giving opposing defense is just something else to worry about with their passing offense. And Buffalo has two steady blockers to help pave the way in the run game with Lee Smith and Tommy Sweeney, who's entering his second year. The Bills returned all five starters up front along an offensive line that many felt was a slight question mark going into the 2019 season, partly because of how that group was put together. The Bills added three free agents up front along with a rookie draft pick, and all they did was gel together quickly and help provide some stability on offense with Deion Dawkins, John Feliciano, Cody Ford, Mitch Morse, and Quentin Spain all coming off of a season where they started all 16 games along with the depth that they have in Spencer Long and Ty Nasecki it's hard not to like them replicating that productivity this upcoming year. And to help strengthen that depth this offseason, they added veterans Darrell Williams at tackle and Evan Boehm at center. So to me, this is the strongest unit on the offense, and that continuity should help them a lot this season. Moving over to the defensive side of the ball, and the Bills want to get much more production out of their defensive ends. The top two sack leaders from last season are now on other teams, so the Bills will look toward Jerry Hughes, who hasn't produced double-digit sacks since 2014, to lead the way in that category. However, if he can't, Buffalo invested in their defensive end spot this offseason with free agent signing Mario Addison, who comes over from the Carolina Panthers, and second-round pick A.J. Epinesa out of Iowa. While both guys aren't considered explosive edge rushers, both are consistently solid players who could help bring more pressure up front. Epinesa, to me, gives them some flexibility with his ability to kick down inside at times. Defensive coordinator Leslie Frazier is hoping to get creative with his defensive personnel, especially when you have a second-year player in Ed Oliver coming off of a strong finish to his rookie season. Oliver got to the quarterback five times last year, in addition to five TFLs and 43 tackles. He's going to take a major leap forward this upcoming season. Alongside him is Star Lotule, who does a great job in freeing up opportunities for Oliver and is tough to move off the spot in the run game. The team hopes that they can get more from a healthy Harrison Phillips who missed the bulk of the season last year with an injury. And the team brought in two key free agents in Vernon Butler from the Carolina Panthers and Quentin Jefferson from Seattle. Both players give them a little bit more juice off the ball inside. And don't sleep on Jefferson who has quietly very good underrated versatility. 
While small on numbers, the Bills linebacking core is big on impact. Third-year pro Tremaine Edmonds made significant strides in his second season, leading the team in tackles. His length and athleticism is tailor-made for today's game, and it is what makes him such a good defender. Matt Milano is just as talented as Edmonds and does a great job on both ends of defense. And Buffalo made an underrated acquisition in free agency with the signing of A.J. Klein from the New Orleans Saints. He's a three-down backer who excels in zone coverage. He is yet another former Panther that has found his way on the roster for Sean McDermott. I'm also interested to see what they have in Foshan Joseph this year as he spent the regular season on IR because of an injury. He's a Matt Milano type that can play either outside backer spot and one who figures to be in the mix for more playing time this season. The strength of the Buffalo Bills defense is in their secondary. Cornerback Tredavious White is one of the top cover men in the NFL. Last season, White became a pro bowler and an all-pro after picking off a league-leading six passes and breaking up another 17. He also forced two fumbles and had four TFLs. Opposite of him is Levi Wallace, who's solid and figures to compete with free agent Josh Norman for that starting role. Now, Wallace, again, is a solid player, but Norman is coming into this situation trying to redeem himself after some down seasons in Washington. Inside, Teron Johnson gives them some speed and explosiveness, and I like how unafraid he is to help out in the run game. He just has to find a way to stay healthy for a full season. So if he can't, look for rookie Dane Jackson out of pit to vie for some time on the inside as well. Jackson was one of the more fluid corners I graded in the draft class. And the Bills have arguably the most versatile set of safeties in the NFL, which helps them match up against essentially anyone on game day. The combination of Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer is an excellent one. Both guys have the ability to defend the run, match up in coverage, and also have tremendous ball skills. And the depth there is strong as well, with Saran Neal, Jaquan Johnson, who started to come on late a little bit last year, and Dean Marlowe, who was re-signed to help provide that depth at safety. But these guys also keep them flexible on the back end and strong on special teams. Look for Zach Moss to be the offensive rookie impact player for the Buffalo Bills. He was brought in to be the co-pilot with Devin Singletary, and with his abilities as a runner and a receiver, expect him to be an integral part of the Bills' offensive plans in 2020. Defensively, rookie A.J. Epinesa was their first draft pick, which sort of tells you their plans for his eventual impact. Epinesa is a power rusher that can rush from inside or outside and figures to see the field a lot in sub packages. I think many will be surprised at how good of a player Davis is during camp. I like his ability to work himself open, stack the defensive back, and track the deep ball. I think he's going to turn a lot of heads this summer in training camp. Free agent signee linebacker Tyler Medikavich is one of the best special teamers in the league and figures to replace longtime backer Lorenzo Carter, who starred in that same role while also playing some quality minutes at linebacker. However, I think his ability to play the actual position gets underappreciated. This could be a reason why he chose to sign with Buffalo instead of remaining with the Steelers, so look for him to remind people of how good of a backer prospect he was at Temple this upcoming summer. Devin Singletary is the biggest X factor for me. His impressive display as a rookie just sets the table for him to have a breakout 2020. If he can be a difference maker from the backfield, then it takes a lot of pressure off of quarterback Josh Allen and potentially exposing him less in the passing game. Defensively, it'll be Josh Norman, mainly because he has to come out and prove that he's still got something left in the tank because if he doesn't, he just takes away another opportunity for a player to grow within that role that he had already on the roster. So if he falls out, then it helps strengthen the unit as a group. This is quietly a big season for Josh Norman. Look for Dawson Knox to have a breakout season. He showed an ability to get open last year as a rookie, and I don't see a reason why that shouldn't be the case in his second year with Buffalo. Making the transition from college football to the NFL is always a tough one, and it varies from player to player, but making the transition from the FCS to the NFL, especially as an early entry prospect, is just a bit tougher, which is why I think second-year player Daryl Johnson out of North Carolina a t will be a breakout player for this Bills defense. He has a year of pro strength and conditioning underneath his belt and acclimation to the NFL game, so look for him to take a big jump in year two, working himself more into the rotation. Football game plan is brought to you in part by Ninth and Lux. Visit the website ninthandlux.com 
and check out the clothing gallery. Do You Music with featured artist IW in his latest release, Mr. Hunter. You can find him on Spotify. Just search IW Mr. Hunter. He's also available on iTunes as well and follow on Instagram at Do You Music. Nesby Phipps, art, life, entertainment. Nesbyphipps.com. Grind It Out Fitness. Visit the website grinditoutfitness.com and download the app. The Academy of Broadcast Media located in Hackensack, New Jersey. Be sure to order your copy of the Go-Go Offense by Coach Brennan Marion on footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Coach Marion goes through the ins and outs of his explosive offense, one that's tearing up the college football field and putting a lot of points on the scoreboard. Again, you can order your copy at footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. One of the major reasons for optimism for the Buffalo Bills is their defensive dominance. I think they're going to be better up front with the new additions along the defensive line and expected growth in year two from Ed Oliver, along with what you have at the back seven level. They're athletic. They can cover. They can match up. This is going to be a very good Bills defense once again this season. And at quarterback, they have an 11th man at the position, one that makes the run game a lot better. One of the defense has to account for each and every game. He makes it an 11-on-11 11 11 game. Josh Allen, despite his flaws, is a guy that makes it tough to defend each and every week because of what he can do with his legs. That element alone just kind of helps elevate everyone else around him and also helps make that run game really go. And to be honest, the time is now for the Buffalo Bills in the AFC East. It's up for grabs. They made the playoffs last year. They return a very strong football team. The rest of the divisions have some serious questions heading into this year, but the Bills seem to be pretty much intact. So again, you can be optimistic about Buffalo this upcoming year. A big cause for concern would be if Josh Allen's limitations don't improve this season. We're talking about deep ball accuracy and overall accuracy and placement. That has to be very consistent this year for him to take the next step and for this offense to really grow. Another cause for concern would be if the kicking game continues to sputter. Stephen Hauschka is a seasoned veteran, but he struggled last year, and that's why they drafted Tyler Bass out of Georgia Southern, who's one of the best kickers, if not the best kicker, in college football. And if they have any issues offensively, they're going to rely on their special teams to help bail them out. But if that kicking game can't hold up their end of the bargain, it could be a long season for Buffalo, losing a lot of close games as a result. The road to the Super Bowl for the Buffalo Bills goes as follows. Number one, it's pretty obvious if Josh Allen's passing catches up with his running, this is going to be a very dangerous and explosive offense. One is going to be fun to watch throughout the season. Two, if they can continue to win at the point of attack, we talked about how good their offensive line is and that continuity. They win up front on offense. They can win up front defensively. If they can continue to win at the line of scrimmage, they could be serious contenders this season. And if their pass rush becomes a problem, I know they can collectively find sacks, but you got to have that one guy that's a bona fide rusher that teams have to account for, which opens things up for everyone else. But if they can become a problem from a pass rushing perspective, the Buffalo Bills can find themselves circling the wagons in Tampa at the end of the season. I have the Bills finishing first in the AFC East. When you look at the elements of what makes a team successful, run game, defense, special teams, they excel in two of the three facets of that equation. I think they'll be better or much more improved in the special teams department from the kicking perspective. And I do think Josh Allen will take some steps forward and become a little bit more consistent of a passer. All he has to do is hit on a few more deep balls per game and this offense can really take flight. So I do see them as a more complete team in the AFC East, one that I do see finishing first in that division. So that's it for this edition of NFL All 32. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts and don't forget to check out and subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Also subscribe on iTunes to Football Game Plan Podcast and leave us a five-star rating. That's where you can find our NFL All 32 podcast. And we have some great Buffalo Bills content coming here on the Football Game Plan YouTube channel with our starting lineup, which is Fantasy Football, Best Bets, which is our prop bets and best bets for the Buffalo Bills season, as well as our All-22 show previewing the film room for the Buffalo Bills. It's D-U-E-U.
tell I see you by this point you read my mind it's time for football we about to keep this thing moving I'm about it you're with it let's do it we gonna make this thing official you heard me if you're the best then let's prove it the goal is set to have a team become a unit man we about to keep this thing moving I'm about it you're with it let's do it we gonna make this thing official you heard me if you're the best then let's prove it the goal is set to have a team become a unit yeah